This session explores digital media ethics. We're going to be looking at some of the ethical issues that have surrounded the emergence of digital media in modern society. Now, if you recall, the CXC digital media syllabus requires students to be able to describe ethical issues and considerations associated with the use of digital media. It forms part of Unit 1 under Opportunities and Pitfalls of Digital Media and the Internet. Ethical issues pervade all aspects of life and is a key component of society's social contract. But this statement is easy to say, but what exactly is ethics? The Webster Dictionary describes ethics as the discipline dealing with what is good and bad and with moral duty and obligation. It also describes ethics as a set of moral principles, a theory or system of moral values. Ethics can also be considered to be the principles of conduct, governing an individual or group, a guiding philosophy, a consciousness of moral importance. As citizens in a global world, we have to build and refine our capacity for responsible ethical judgments. This capacity has to be informed by our own understanding of the ethical frameworks and cultural norms that shape our judgments, but not just our judgments, the judgments in others. This is a prerequisite for successfully navigating our new digital reality. The implication of this is that we must be prepared to defend our actions, not just to those around us, but to the entire world which might be looking on. A difficult prospect, yes? Just look at some of the more popular issues which have arisen as a result of digital media recently. There is WikiLeaks. There is a more recent US PRISM example where the US government has been accused of spying not just on its own nationals, but people around the world. Given that more and more of us will be encountering more and more ethical issues evoked by digital media, learning how to deal with these sorts of issues will better prepare us to respond in an ethically informed and responsible way to what is to come. But given the nature of change and the pace of change, we can also say that knowing and learning how to deal with these sorts of issues will better prepare us to respond in an ethically informed and responsible way to what is already here. So students, teachers, you should be equipped to identify, to analyze, and to discuss the key aspects of digital media ethics. What we'd like to do in this session is to enable all of the users, the consumers, and the creators of digital media and digital content to do the right thing when the time comes. But we also want to enable you to defend your actions based on an informed and well thought out set of arguments. So what are some of the ethical issues relating to digital media? Well, digital media ethics fall under three broad headings. One, cyber crimes. Two, plagiarism. Three, what is right or wrong about individual actions when dealing with digital media? So for example, some of the ethical issues to consider with digital media. Downloading software that's too costly to purchase from file sharing networks. Downloading software that's too costly to purchase. And there are a number of internal arguments or rational, rationalizations that people make when choosing to go to a file sharing network to illegally download software. Well, it's only one piece of software. Those large movie companies aren't going to miss one copy of their movie if I download it for free, will they? And so users make these judgment calls when accessing content illegally. They say that or reason to themselves that it's available online. I didn't put it there. Somebody put it there. Surely if I just take it, I'm not stealing. It's still there, is it not? And stealing really is taking something from someone. I'm not taking it from them because the file is still there, the movie is still in the store, or it's on the DVD, or it's still showing in the theater. I'm just copying it, or I'm going to use it just to see if the, the movie is what I'd like to see, and I'll delete it once I'm finished. And there are a number of these rationales that, that we go through in making these decisions. But is it right? When the law says that the owner of that content has a right to sell it, 
has a right to distribute it, has a right to manage who has it and when they have it for? Are these rationals that we make ethical? What about making copies of a borrowed CD or a rented DVD before returning it? Is it right? Yes, you're returning the borrowed CD. Yes, you're returning the, the rented DVD. But now you have access to something that you are not legally entitled to. And these are some of the issues that come up when dealing with digital media. Because it is so easy to reproduce, because it's so easy to share, because it's so easy to use or to manipulate, we make judgment calls concerning how we use it, which may not always be consistent with the legal definition of how the content owner would like us to use it. Another example would be stripping digital rights management or DRM restrictions from downloaded media to make an unprotected copy because you want to run it on multiple devices or you want to share it or you want to use it for some other use not intended by the original content holder. Is it right because you can do it? Or is it wrong because the content owner says you shouldn't do it? These are parts of the, the issues related to digital media. And really the rise of digital media has introduced a whole new set of situations for which ethical considerations now apply. With digital media, we can see new combinations of ethical challenges that we haven't had to face before. With digital media, because you can now mix copying with manipulating with illegal sharing or unauthorized sharing, it creates whole new issues. But it also creates issues, for example, let's take this, this common example of a new world, new media ethical consideration. If I am in the same room with a friend, or if I'm at the home of a friend, and I took a, a photograph 25, 30 years ago, the photograph might end up in an album. And then I can agree with the friend that, you know, we are sharing this, this moment, and it's our personal moment to share. Today, with the proliferation of mobile devices and digital cameras, and social networking sites, a whole new set of considerations emerge. I take the picture in a trusted environment, and then I determine to post it online because it's convenient. But then the photograph might show the home of my friend. It might show my friend in a dress or in a, a, in a, a situation that really was private and personal, appropriate in that context, but wholly inappropriate when posted online. So there are new privacy issues. It might also show my friend when posted online in a manner that is not authorized by me. I might not want my image out there on the internet. I had no problems if my friend took it while we were together, but I might have real problems if it is now shared and therefore out of our control to determine who has onward access to it. And these are whole new issues that link privacy with ownership with redistribution rights in a way that simply was not part of a previous consideration before digital media, before social networking sites, and before the internet. What's right? What's wrong? There may be no malicious intent in posting it on the social networking site, but there certainly can be unintended consequences. And so it's often claimed that with online communications, because it offers anonymity, it encourages greater openness and honesty than most face-to-face -face communication can. And so we have to know how all these dynamics are changing the way humans interact, but it's also changing the kinds of considerations we must now have as human beings, as social creatures in a digital world. It can be beneficial in some circumstances to know that I can hide behind my online handle and post something but it also encourages less attractive forms of communication. And if you think there are many examples where we can see people making statements online that they will not make in a face-to-face -face interaction. And we can also see and, and, and draw on many examples where that inappropriate online interaction can lead to issues. There are less attractive forms of communication such as flaming or trolling or cyber stalking or cyber bullying. But there are also examples where inappropriate online communication can lead you into trouble, not just with those who you are socially connected to, 
but it can lead to trouble with your employer, where you're doing something in your private personal life, but sharing it on a public platform, and then being confronted in the office about why were you holding this drink, or why were you standing in this position, or why were you wearing this garment, dress, gown, pants, vest, bareback, bare-chested. And there is this blurring of the line between what was once private and what was once public because of social media, because of digital content. And so it's creating new privacy issues that we must now contend with as a society. It's no different here at home in the Caribbean, where we have schools grappling with, uh, let's call it student-made mobile videos, or even student-made digital photography of incidents in schools that are online and available to a global audience before it reaches to the principal's office. This is a real world and these are real issues that we face. Is it right to use the immediacy of access that the smartphones provide and that internet connectivity allows to broadcast to the world? There is no easy answer to that question. What there are are a set of ethical considerations that must now be borne in mind by the capturers of the content, by the sharers of the content, by those who are impacted by the content, a new conversation must now take place. There is also the issue of participation or sharing. Terms of use contracts and end user licenses or EU LAs on websites are not always clear to all users. Most users actually don't even go to visit the terms of use of a website believing that once it's online, it's available to all. And that's not always true. And so sensitivity to this whole issue of participation and use or terms of use for content found online is another ethical consideration. Because I have access to it does not necessarily mean that I have access to share it or that I have access to republish it or that I have access to reuse it. Plagiarism is another very significant aspect of the digital media ethical considerations. The ready availability of information has made it much easier for others to plagiarize work. One center for study surveyed 43,000 high school students in public and private schools and found that one out of every three high school students admitted that they use the internet to plagiarize an assignment. What would those numbers be like here at home? I wonder. You can investigate with your own school studies. Ownership is another critical issue. as related to content, consent, and copyright. A good example, again, is photography. As many people have experienced already, I'm sure, a contemporary cell phone or a smartphone not only records status and actions, but it can also immediately transmit it to broader distribution mechanisms. I can use my smartphone to take a, a photograph of you and publish it on Facebook, post it on Twitter, and share it on other social networking sites. I can use my smartphone to take a video of you and post it instantly onto YouTube. So who owns that photograph of you? Who gives or what gives me the right to distribute it? When is consent needed? When should it be sought? These are not always clear issues, but these are some of the very real and profound aspects and challenges that have been created by the new availability of technology and the new ease of access to sharing platforms. These are some of the digital media ethical issues that we have to consider as we create our own digital media. There is also the issue of credibility. New technology has made it far easier to adjust or to alter work done by others, thus changing context and changing meaning. For example, playing a small part of an interview without context to deliberately make your own point or to deliberately embarrass or show up the person being interviewed is now very easy, very easy. It's also easy to use a digital photograph, for example, to change the appearance of someone or change the appearance of something and to create a new reality. The credibility of digital media is one of the issues that has to be faced and that we have to be aware of as we create our own digital media. Finally, the issue of identity. Identity is a critical issue in digital media ethics 
as the technology makes it easy to develop new identities and change existing ones and adopt other people's identity. You would have heard the term identity theft. I can create you online and then I can act as you online if I had the right tools and the right competencies. But you can also do the same with me. We can create entirely new online realities where we pretend to be someone that we are not. And who would know? After all, if I search you on Google and find you, then that's who you are, not so? If Wikipedia says something about you, then that has to be true, shouldn't it? Identity is one of the biggest challenges with digital media. The issue of credibly confirming that what you are seeing and what you are reading and what you are viewing is in fact what it is. These issues, privacy, participation, authorship, ownership, credibility, identity, are all part of the framework of understanding digital media ethics that we have to be familiar with and that we have to be able to discuss in an intelligent way as we proceed.